Hey everyone, welcome to the Magical Healing the World podcast. My name is David Staub. I am so excited today. Uh, we are bringing back one of my absolute favorite guests that we've had on our podcast, Ms. Karen O'Neill. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks for uh, putting me back on when I begged you to do it. <laughs> oh my gosh, there was not much begging involved. It's funny because when we first kicked the podcast off, you were one of the ones that stood out to us. So we're like, oh my God, we got to get her on. We got to talk to her because the work you're doing is so important, but your story is so amazing. Yes. And it's so cool to have you back on here because it's transitioned from when we last spoke to what you're doing now in private practice. And there's just so much to it. Well, when I look at my life story in the last three years, I started just by doing Ibogaine because I thought maybe it would work for bulimia. Yeah. Addiction's addiction, right? And like, right. I'm the first person to say, let's do this. Let's jump off the cliff. You know, risky behavior is not really that much of a problem for me. And so, and it worked and it stopped for like six weeks, which doesn't sound like much, but it was huge because my clean time was being measured in days, not weeks, not months and not years like now. So yeah. like, I'm, I'm like past the three yard mark now. And the really cool thing about that was I forgot I forgot the day it was until something on Facebook reminded me probably from the year before saying, oh, I'm, you know, two years cleaner or whatever the hell it was. <laughs> but, yeah. So I, um, I did it and I was clean for six weeks, but I was in a toxic relationship and that made it pretty hard for me to do what I needed to do. And I did it again a couple of years later, two and a half years later. This time I knew more about preparation, yeah. setting intention, and that it wasn't a magic pill, even though I was told it's not a magic pill. I wanted it to be a magic right. pill. Of course, you Nobody got those expectations. Nobody wants to do this work. <laughs> Nobody wants to do the hard stuff. You know, it's a drag. It's right. a drag and you have to police yourself and you have to check in with yourself and monitor yourself. So, you know, the second time it was like all golden. And um, so I started speaking publicly in Portland, Oregon, where I lived at the time, just to, I was so enthusiastic. It's like, you guys have to know about this. You, I just have to spread the word. Right. And then a year later, um, actually just a few months after that, I went to Mexico where I am now because a new Ibogaine aftercare clinic was opening. And I thought, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be the cook, you know, and I'm gonna <laughs> hijack some aftercare because I didn't really have the money or, or even the place to do it properly. I'm like, I'll cook the meals. I can do the breathwork classes. I can do Qigong. I'll go horseback riding. Right. I'll, you know, I'll get that community experience that I was really wanting to have with other people. And it didn't matter that I was the only person that had done it for bulimia. You know, addiction's addiction. And we all have our, you know, our horrible stories. And there's okay. a lot of them. So, uh, but I ended up staying three months and then another three months. And then I just decided not to go back. And so where I met you, I had accepted another job because the, the co-director of the place I worked died very suddenly. Oh, wow. And so we just, you know, shut down and I took the summer off, went back home to Portland to see my family. And the, when, where we caught up, I was working at another place with people I had met there. And I worked there for six months. And then it was really time, I, I got some kind of a virus. And so I was flat on my back for a couple of weeks. And oh. it was just a blessing actually, because wow. it made me slow down and, Stop, you know, just trying to do everything everybody else wanted me to do because my yeah. self-care was starting to dwindle. Oh. When you are living and working in a place like I did two years as the man, you know, yeah. it's just a whole lot of drama, a lot of people in and out, not saying it wasn't wonderful. I mean, it was the best internship I ever could have had. Yeah. But that two weeks on my back, I'm like, I really need to be doing this for the people like me, you know, which oh. doesn't mean I won't help drug addicts. Of course I will. I've got a lot more experience with that, but I'm the only I became professional that I'm aware of, and it's a pretty small community. So I know most yeah. of the people that specializes in the eating disorder part of it, you know, and it's huge. There's millions of us. We're all in the closet. We don't want to talk about it because it's gross. You know, number one, we get judged. Yeah, you can't even control yourself. It's like, that's right. I can't. Absolutely. You got that right. And the other part, you know, involves deliberate purging, which again is, is repugnant. It should be repugnant. <laughs> You know, we, we don't want, you know, to encourage people to be doing this, but we live in a society that glorifies, you know, the, you know, the very thin. And so even though I was raised properly, I would say in that it, I wasn't told everything is about your looks and getting a man and, you know, all the usual stuff for someone my age, because like I'm 60, you know, most people my age were raised with some of that mentality, but 
I wasn't, but I still picked up enough of it. I got, I, I got to say, just 35 years. I, I got to say real quick, I love, love what you're doing because that's one of the things that we at Magical couldn't align more with is speaking on the stigmatized topics. Like yeah. it's such a breakthrough thing that you're doing. And I want to reiterate this again, and I'm going to post this uh, whenever I'm going to post it in writing, whenever I post this, but I want to reiterate you. I, I mean, I've we're we've been all around the plant medicine community, multiple groups and all over the internet and the world. I haven't seen anyone else that works just with, with bulimia patients. And it's such a stigmatized thing it so really many people is. have it but they're afraid to talk about it well and, and we look perfect you know we look as perfect because it's like david i want you to believe the lie i want you to believe that i've got everything together and right. i've got it all going on because you would not like me if you knew what was really going on and that's at the heart of every last one of them yeah you know if there's an exception yeah. i've not come across it yet yeah that's absolutely right and yeah. this work is so important and anyone listening out there I just want to take a real quick minute. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I want to take a real quick minute. And anyone consciously thinking of this, if you have an issue or if you know someone, a family member, something, this is the person to get in contact with. I mean, this is so important. And man, you've been on the journey of trying all the other things and just not nothing working. Um, but yeah, go ahead and continue with how it, how it kind of led to where you are. It's so cool. I think I was actually kind of done. But I mean, yeah. there, you know, we can take this in a million different directions. Is just that, yeah, Ibogaine is good for someone that's tried everything else. And yeah. I hadn't specifically tried plant medicine mm -hmm. because I didn't really know to do it. I mean, I was uneducated five years ago, the first time I did a blood dose, which is a high dose of an extraction of the root bark from Africa from the shrub, just for, you know. Yeah, yeah. Deeply. And then you can also do the root bark directly, you know, mm -hmm. take it by spoonfuls, which is how it's done traditionally in the Bawidi tribe. But, yeah. Um, that's um, for someone, you know, <laughs> that really is really ready to do whatever it takes. Yeah. And, and what it does, it's a really dirty molecule that scrubs every area of the brain clean and, and you don't forget your memories. Yeah. Um, you know, I still remembered how to binge and purge. I still remembered, you know, all these things, but it just took away the desire, like boom, gone wow. for like 30 days. Yeah. That's for amazing. Like 30 days. And that, that window that 30 day window gives you the opportunity to create the kind of life you want for yourself. So in my case, it was all about a healthy relationship with food, which what is that? You know, right. what on earth is that? I don't know. And so I, I watched other people, you know, yeah. and I was kind of afraid to eat too much. And even now, three years later, I don't, you know, I'm still, you know, even though I'm fine, I'm still uncomfortable with being too full. Mm. You know, it's just like a hardwired thing for me. Yeah. And it turns out it's healthier to, eat mini meals all day long anyway. So that's what oh, I do. Yeah. Easier to digest. And... and talk to us about your practice now. Cause you're, I mean, it's so yeah. cool because you like this story. I can't get over it enough because you went through the fires, you tried everything, you found what healed you. And then with the intention of just going there, but the universe was like, no, you're not going here just to do this. You got other things you were yeah. going to you were going to be the one running it. So talk to us about your practice. It was really about just letting the universe show me the way. Yeah, yeah. Because, like I get in my own way so well. I love that. You have to have, <laughs> so like, I want to have control and like be the one steering. Have you met me? I guess you haven't really, but like I'm all about control, you yeah. know, and, you know, being wired a little too tight and being a little too intense and, you know, wanting to go forward and jump off the highest cliff or, you know, whatever it is, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm all about that. But when I actually slow down and let the universe, you know, it drops breadcrumbs, you know, and everything that I did from, you know, doing I began in the first place to doing it the second time to, you know, just going to Mexico for a little while for a different experience, you know, for my personal growth, then thinking, I want to really stay a part of this in some way. What's that going to look like? And, you know, when you, when you work for other people, there's like a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. And so the beauty of doing my own thing is I get to do my own thing. Right. So what I do in my practice is in Rosarito, I rent an Airbnb. It's safe and secure in a gated community, you know, armed guards, you know, yep. and they would, you know, <laughs> they love protecting people. That's and awesome. I hire a doctor and a nurse and a paramedic, and they are there for 24 hours because Ibogaine is really, really serious. I mean, it's, it's a medication that if you don't have medical testing, and, and by the way, that's included too. I take them for medical testing if they don't have it already from the States, if they didn't have insurance, because it's really oh, cool. cheap here. 
Cool. So we get the EKG and we get the blood work and, and a drug test, no matter what they said, you know, yeah. you, you never know what someone else is hiding. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, 100%. <laughs> And, Especially us uh, addicts, we're good at like. It's just, all you know, about the shame, the baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all about believe what I tell that's you. Right. You know, not what is. So that's all included. And generally, we would do the treatment that night or the next night. It's a night medicine, like most of the medicines you work with are probably, yeah. you know, yep. night medicines. And um, so that the medical team is there for twenty four hours, just to make sure everything's okay. Mm. Because what the ibogaine does is it slows down the breathing the organs, uh, slows everything down. The brainstem distributes the venison and it shoots right up through the cerebral cortex and it knocks out your depth perception and, and everything. So generally you are, when your eyes are closed, you're seeing the visions and they can be all, I've never heard any two of the same stories. <laughs> <laughs> and doing it twice, my two experiences could not have been more polar opposite. Wow. Yeah. Um, the second one was actually kind of rough, but that did the trick because like, I don't ever want to have to do this again. Yeah. So we, we, we treat them, you know, the first night or the second night, just depending on the time of arrival and their comfort level. We don't want to just rush them. And then they are um, with me for a week. And, and I'm speaking about the eating disorder people. I'm a, a coach. So I coach them through it. I hold their hand and I dial all my intensity way down to, you know, <laughs> soft, manageable level yeah. because it's all about me creating a wonderful environment for them you know, a soft, you know, cozy, you know, when you, when you do this medicine, it's, it's wonderful, but you're also emotionally fragile afterward because you're a newborn, you, you are starting a new life and, and it's gone through every area of your brain and it's already reset your tastes. Wow. So people that smoke their first cigarette tastes awful. You know? Wow. Just, that's <laughs> crazy. Oh, most people reintroduce the cigarettes because they just got done giving up a bunch of other stuff. And you really, you need to keep your crutches around you until you're ready to give them up. You do. Some people can just cold Turkey everything, but those people are never going to be my clients. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. So, yep. um, so my job is to cook for them, you know, healthy meals, whatever they like, help them, you know, manage everything, keep a very soft, calm, quiet environment. We're doing yoga every day, just like off of YouTube, you know, and we're watching documentaries about spirituality and whatever they oh, might be like so in. Cool. But they don't have their phones because, you know, that will draw them back into mm -hmm. their old life, whatever was not working yep. for them. And, and usually after a couple of days, if they have some business, you know, I mean, we talk about all of this in advance, but yeah, of course you can call your family. Of course you can check on, you know, your bank account or whatever it is you need to do. But in general, the whole idea is to create uh, the perfect place for them to have a new experience. And this will go anywhere from one week to two weeks. Two weeks is the maximum that I will do it because that takes a lot out of me being on my A game for two weeks, right? right. And how many yeah. doses in that? How many, how many journeys in that two weeks? Um, just, just the initial one. And then 5-MeO DMT a couple of days later. Ooh, that, yeah, on. that's the cherry on top, baby. <laughs> that's Especially amazing. for drug addicts because they're detoxing and th their journeys might be a little rougher. They might get a little more of a kicking, you know, yeah. in the rear than, than someone else. But, but you never know because everybody's experience is different. And that just, you know, they don't call it the God molecule for nothing. It just brings them right back to source and themselves, which is one of the same thing. I actually just got the MT molecule right here. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you about that. I saw you right at the beginning in the video. Yeah. I just got it on the inner arm. It's, it's miraculous, man. That's, yeah. that's so cool. You add that to it, man. What an experience yeah. this is. Mm -hmm. It's like a true healing experience. And Oh man, that is, that is awesome. What you've created over there. And it's not now our, what I love about it too, in studying different businesses and from an entrepreneurial aspect. Um, and this isn't all the time by any means. I don't want to talk in absolutes, but sometimes the most, what ends up being the most impactful situation is the niche when you can really narrow down that niche. Yeah. And there's nothing really, at least that I know of for bulimia stuff that works. Like I was researching, like there's no, I mean, little, it's just like with me with alcoholism, it's like, four percent is successful in rehab it's like four yeah, percent that's a lot of people but that that other 96 percent is a whole lot more right you know? and it's exactly. the same thing with aa you know their statistics their own statistics are, are really poor you know it's like yeah let's just keep doing what doesn't work because the insurance will pay for it you know right. if they have insurance freaking money yeah yeah yep. yeah well i i do 
think, you know, most people that I talk to, you know, potential clients or clients that I've had, they're already open to plant medicine. So a lot of them had tried things like ketamine, mushrooms, ayahuasca, and those, those medicines are very helpful for helping process trauma mm -hmm. and everything. And, and trauma is underneath every addiction. I mean, we all know that, right? So uh, that's actually helpful, but what the Ibogaine does that nothing else does that we're aware of anyway, and I think we would have figured it out by now if there was something else right. in the hallucinogenic world anyway, that uh, that works to completely defrag you and, and reset, you know, reset your tastes for a little while. So that's ayahuasca right. won't do that. 5-MeO right. won't do that. Cannabis won't do that. In fact, it's just going to make you hungry, probably, <laughs> you know. Right. But um, yeah, most of my clients have been open to this kind of thing. Um, others are, you know, people that I've talked to that I haven't had as clients yet, but people I've talked to on the phone, they're willing, but afraid, you know, it's like, okay, so would have been nice, you know, if they knew a little bit about something and here they are, and they're going to just jump in and do the granddaddy of all psychoactive medicines. Right. right. So, I mean, that takes a really brave person. Right. And that's, that's the thing. I have not known anything to hit addiction the way this does this is like yeah. the addiction plant medicine it totally is so pe drug addicts is particularly opiate addicts are pretty terrified of withdrawals because they're just miserable oh yeah miserable mm -hmm. and you know with the shakes and the you know all of it all of just you know the sensations in their skin and and everything and what ibogaine does for gosh at least 80 percent of them is they don't have withdrawals or they're like really, really reduced. Mind blowing. That's why it's known for opiate addiction. That's that is a mind blowing. It actually it eliminates or lessens the withdrawal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the the other twenty percent, most of those are on um, synthetic, you know, synthetic mm -hmm. opiates like methadone, suboxone. That is some really evil stuff, because yeah. you can test clean. But there, there is some kind of connection to the brain and the tissue that remembers and still wants. So there are some clinics that do treat, you know, do treat that. They'll bring someone in without switching them to a short-acting opiate, which would basically be oxy or or a morphine pill. Yeah. Um, and and some people have done well, but most of them don't. You know what we would do at the, in the clinics that I work for, we would switch them to the short-acting opiate for however long, depending on their dosage, how many years, you know, all the factors that you have to consider, you know, when you're thinking about medicine. And uh, those were the people, that 20% were the ones that were on um, synthetics, mm. even if they'd been off it for some time. You know, yeah. it's really, it's, yeah. Ibogaine does not work with synthetics is what I'm trying that's, to say. That's that's good to know. And I'm, I've had this question come up a lot uh, in speaking about Ibogaine. And I know you've, you've experienced most if not all the plant medicines i assume uh but like i with ayahuasca and ibogaine what would you like people are like what's the difference like what what would you consider the experience difference like oh different medicines different continents yeah yeah and, and, and i'm kind of not the right person to ask because believe it or not i've never had visions on ayahuasca and i've done it eight or nine times Interesting. Never visions, just, you know, just the whole, you know, matrix thing and, yep. you know, and, and the feelings and the thoughts are there, but never, yep. I've never been shown a vision, so I can't really speak to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ibogaine has, that gives you yes. the vision. Oh, yes. wow. Almost always. There, there are a few people that don't have them and, you know, we just tell them, hey, visions are overrated. You're getting the reset anyway. That's but awesome. the nice thing about the visions is you can learn from them. You know, or at least in my case, I was able to learn quite a bit from them and, uh, they keep you busy. <laughs> they yeah, keep you yeah. busy as you're laying there for eight hours, just eight you know, hours. waiting for the experience to be over. Yeah, the active part, you know, the visionary state is anywhere from four to eight hours. Wow. Mine yeah, was about six. The, the stern teacher. It's like a stern teacher. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. My first blood was very clean and perfect. And it was, it was a stern teacher, but it was like, yeah, that's true. And that's true. And yeah. yeah, I did that. You know, the medicine was showing me, I'm a graphic designer my whole adult life. Yeah. So my job is to communicate combining words and images. So my journey came to be in that format a lot. Wow. You know, a lot. Wow. Life lessons, you know, big black, you know, aerial black, you know, uh, red lettering, you know, against, you know, the black of, you know, having my eyes closed. And um, then, and other, the images were specific, like, about bulimia and it was showing me my own vomit in really horrible ways. Like there Whoa. were these great, yeah, great big, um, you know, those culverts, yeah. you know, to 
10 feet in diameter, probably just flooding out at a whitewater pace, vomit, my eye vomit. Yeah. Okay? And I'm just like, whoa. And then the next image was kind of like a National Geographic sinkhole that we see on TV where the earth is imploding into itself. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, my own vomit. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. And then right after that, it shows me a horrible car crash. Now, I've never been in a car crash, it was oh. all symbolic. Yeah. Wow. Pretty crazy stuff, huh? Wow. Yeah. Man, that so was cool. me. That was me. And I, I wish I could speak to other people's experiences more. I always would ask my clients afterward, you know, what was it like? And most of them, for some reason, didn't want to talk about it. I don't know why I like to talk about it, but I think yeah. it's just because it's so, I, I, I want to use the word revolutionary. Yeah. It's not, it's been around, you know, since, uh, you know, whenever, you know, we were formed and the earth was formed and plants yeah. were formed, but um, it, it's revolutionary for us and our knowledge and what it can do and just how absolutely amazing it is. And it works for alcohol addiction, um, it, you could use it for a lesser addiction like smoking, but I wouldn't <laughs> no. right. Right. Uh, unless you exhausted all other possibilities only because you need to take a month out of your life. Yeah. You no, know, it's not just about, you know, people do that. There's clinics down here. You know, people do have clinics where you can come in and go out for three days, uh, but you're not getting the proper work done. You're just getting the reset and then you go right back home to the yep. same toxic everything, you know, whatever the situation is. And even though you may not be physically craving to do something, and this works for all addictions, you know, including yeah. my addiction of bulimia, but you remember, you know, you haven't forgotten what stress feels like or what a trigger feels like, and you haven't forgotten what you would do in order to numb it. Mm. So what I work with the clients remotely for a week or two before they even come down and I oh, cool. give them some journaling exercises to help the medicine work better. So one of them is like a trauma timeline of their life with about seven or eight specific journaling exercises so they can really understand, yeah, this is, this is why I got the way, this, this is why I chose these coping mechanisms and, and it's, you know, I'm not a bad person, you know, I don't suck, you know, and, yeah. I, and I, I deserve love and I deserve to love myself and to start learning, you know, that type of thing. And then the other one is an addiction mindset uh, series of exercises. And that is like just recognizing the addictions we all have. And we'll have like several dozen of them, oh, you yeah. know, whether it's gaming, TV, you know, you know, softer addictions that really can get in the way and, oh, you know, absolutely. ruin lives, jobs, relationships. 100%. You know, so you list out all of your addictions and decide which ones are soft and which one you, you want, you know, to manage and not give up just yet. Yep. And then which ones you want to absolutely eliminate. So uh, that pretty, helps. I've I actually have a soft one to gaming. It's because I used to be a big yeah. RPG guy. Oh my gosh, I loved them. And I stopped because all the time they're taking. But it's interesting now in this path because I they have them on the uh, the the phone now. So like I even, oh. this just like two months ago, I got wrapped up in this RPG on my phone. And before I knew it, I was waking up in the morning to play. I was playing at night. I was like, <laughs> hold on. I'm trying to like run a few businesses here and get things going. And I'm spending four hours a day, some like in the morning and evening and trying to change my routine around. I'm like, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whooa. I got to, yeah. I had to like stop completely. And it's so, and you did though. You did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but, but I mean, I've done so much work on my mind over the years and I had to overcome alcoholism. So like, I've done a lot of that work to where I became aware of it, but it's, yeah, it, it there are, I never heard it called soft and hard addictions. That's mm -hmm. so true. That's, I would consider that a soft addiction um, and I can still manage it. But if I start playing an RPG right now, I mean, I'm going to keep You're right back in. <laughs> yeah, like that's it. Like it's, yeah. it's, that's, um, that's such a unique way to think. And that's really cool. I really like that. Yeah. It's you like I was saying book, earlier, you, to any kind give of like, up everything all at once yeah. is very, not, not smart. Yeah. 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 You should really write a uh, a little ebook or something on that. People would be all about that. That would be. That's on my to do list. The tough thing I've, I've never heard. Like this is really, really quality, great, great yeah. concepts. The perspectives are just so unique. I love it. So well, please, I've worked please. with wonderful people, yeah. and the journaling exercises are from a fellow being true to you coach who's been my man for two and a half years. Yeah. So you know, she hands it over to me because she knows you know that these things are very helpful. So I can't claim it as my own. I've just picked up things, bits and pieces from all the different people I've worked with. So, you know, while I don't have like a whole bunch of letters behind my name, that's what I've got the doctors for. That's you know? right. That's right. 
it it relieves me from the responsibility of not having a whole bunch of letters behind my name. That's it's right. Like, hey, you know, I'm just a person that cares about you and wants you to be better. And yeah. I have been doing this kind of work and I've been where you've been, you know, yeah. similar enough that, um, you know, we, we can, we can make a connection. We're going to help you figure out, you're going to do all the work, not me. You know, I'm yeah. not going to tell you what to do. That's right. We're going to help you figure out what is best for you. And, and can you um, speak a bit to, I know you've already done this a little bit, uh, but I always like to get, uh, when we're nearing the end, I like to talk about the integration aspect because a lot of people, I know it's like common to me and you, but a lot of people don't really still understand the, cause a lot of, uh, I'm not down talking, uh, other people that facilitate and stuff, but a lot of people don't focus on integration and all that. Can you speak to the importance of integration and kind of what you do to yeah, go back? I, I would actually propose I love what you do. That's why I'm pointing Integration it begins before you do the medicine. Integration mm -hmm. begins when, when you start to think, you know, maybe this is something I should look at or examine. Yeah. It's integration is the whole process really. And it's how you take what you want to do and how you're going to do it and how you weave it together and put it down into a plan in your life. My clients go home with a, with a life plan. You know, by the time they go home, they have a life plan. Yeah, it's not written in stone. And of course, they're going to they're gonna tweak as, as they find some things maybe don't work as well as they thought or, you know, add in some things that they hadn't thought of before. But they're, they're going to have a plan. So the integration is, is every step of the way. That's awesome. And really the rest of your life. But That's with this particular medicine, um, you really do need a month to okay. integrate because it has, you know, made you emotionally fragile. The mm -hmm. second time I did the medicine, I saw a uh, fight between my cousin and her husband and I was staying with them. I, was, I, I went to, you know, where, where they live, Las Vegas. It's like, Ooh, you know, the weather will be better than in Portland. And, <laughs> you know, and yeah, and couldn't have anticipated that happening. And nobody likes to see a fight oh, and no. it didn't get like horribly <laughs> physical or anything, oh. but nobody would like that. But for me, it was absolutely horrific. Oh. It was absolutely oh. horrific. And as it happened, there was an Ibogaine aftercare place in Las Vegas that I knew of. And I was friends with the, um, with the guy that owned it. And I went to the garage, packed up all my stuff in the suitcase, went into the garage and called, <laughs> can, can I, I don't know what to do. He's like, right. you just flooded 10 days ago. You get it over and come over here. You know, oh my God. Out. Wow. Yeah. I'm so glad yeah. that happened. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. just an example, you know, yeah. loud noises, you know, screaming children in, in the pool. I remember that from my first flood, you know, like up, up to a week later, it's like, wow, there's, um, this is horrible. It, it, it feels like a war zone and it wasn't, and I knew it wasn't. It's just the capacity to deal. So you really are sensitive. And if you take that back to the, some of the medicines you've worked with, like you know, ayahuasca or mushrooms, you really do need that next day, not just to catch up on sleep, oh, but to put it there. And even a day after that is really, really ideal. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. So it's like that times 30. Wow. What yeah. an intense medicine. Yeah, it is. It is. It's not a pleasure thing. It's not yeah, a pleasure yeah. thing at all. <laughs> not like, and, oh, I want a vacation. Let's go do some Ibogaine. Yeah, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Yeah. And I would say the same about ayahuasca too. You know, ayahuasca, at least for me, the first two hours are very rough, yeah. very difficult, filled with self-loathing and, you know, and all these, it's like, wow, okay, you're right. I need to work on these things and, you know, and replace them with better things, you know, better thoughts yeah. about myself. Uh, but then, you know, all the, you know, yummy stuff, you know, kicks in and, you know, yep. as on the other side of the you're just like, wow, this is wonderful. And I'm so at peace. And I really did release a lot. Yeah. yeah and that's the point. So, well, you know, that you'd asked earlier, the difference between the two medicines, night and day, hmm. night and day. And the vision part, I can't really speak to. Right. Right. Since I'm just one of those, there's a theory that, uh, that I kind of subscribe to that because I did Ibogaine first, it kind of claimed me. Oh, interesting. Who knows? Wow. <laughs> who knows? But well, yeah, I had a friend who believed that. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. And I don't intend to ever do it again. Doesn't mean I wouldn't do a low dose or, or do root bark or maybe do some, you know, uh, boosters if I needed to, but I haven't needed to. Yeah. So. And even though it's not a vacation, you're in a pretty beautiful spot, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Like, really gorgeous. Like, I want people to know that too. Like, 
uh, the play charrette, while yes, it's not a vacation and it's there for healing and addiction and specifically bulimia, but addiction for anyone that's struggling with hard addictions, but bulimia specifically is a big one. You in a beautiful place. A lot of these places aren't really, and there's nothing, it doesn't have to be a beautiful place, but it's nice that it is. Like, what's the location like? Well, it's an Airbnb, so yeah. it, it could be different places, but yeah. generally it's in Rosarito overlooking the beach. The houses are pretty oh, close together. Um, there's no beaches close by, not yeah. in Rosarito. We want to be close enough to a hospital in case there's an adverse event. There hasn't been, but we're not going to take any chances. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the clients usually don't want to do much for the first couple of days. I, and I, and I, I have things to keep them busy. I, I do run breath work and guided meditations and things like that. I'll give them, you know, massages. Not like I'm any good at it, but I'm intuitive enough to, you know, oh, like, yeah. come here, honey. Let's just, you know, let's fix it yeah, up. Yeah. And so uh, we can also bring in someone, you know, to do yoga and everything. But we don't want to keep them so busy. We, we kind of want them to be comfortable with boredom. Because that's a huge trigger. Huge. That is yep. huge. No one can sit with themselves nowadays. Right. That's huge. I love well, that. Well, that's why we have all these things you're talking about. You know, uh, look, it's right here. Notification, notification, notification. You have to be really careful what you do that first 30 days because it will become your new um, go-to thing. When I did my first flood, I didn't know not to use my phone. And instead of reading books, which is something I used to read a book every day, you know, until I was like in my early 40s and the eyesight started going bad. So it's like, yeah, I don't want to have to, you know, put on my glasses every time. Yeah. And then like, oh, but hey, there's Netflix. So right. I turned into a Netflix junkie from my first flood and I haven't changed that. Yeah, you know, I haven't changed that. Yeah. It, it's not running my life or anything. It's not stopping me from doing what I'm doing. So I do too much of it. It's a right. soft addiction yeah, there you go. that I have to keep an eye on. Right, right. Because yeah. your self, your level of self awareness is so like high now at that yeah. point that you're like, all right, yeah. there's no red flags here. It's a yellow flag that yeah. I'm gonna keep an eye on. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You got it. Yeah, gotcha. I'm there with you. Hey, man, we're addicts. I got. I'm there with you. I get it. I get it. We understand each other at a different <laughs> like level. It's there's something in the brain, man. It really is. It's like it, it, there's something that connects people that have addiction, and it's not like. Yeah, it's just so interesting because I totally well, get it. It's the reward system, you know? It's the opiate receptor reward system. When I did, I began the first time I heard about it and I'm like, I want to do this right now. Yeah. Um, took a while to make the arrangement <laughs> and everything. <laughs> and I didn't really even know what it was. You right, know, it was just right, like, right. I was willing to do it. I was willing to try it because yeah. you know, it was just time. You know, it was just time to let go of all that. Yeah. Uh, what was my point <laughs> when I did it the first time? <laughs> what? reward center uh, yes i thank you thank you gotcha. i figured addiction is addiction mm -hmm. but it was just a guess it yeah. turned out that i'm right you know that yeah. all addictions whether it's gambling or porn or you know what have you it all goes to that you know loop system i and just did my last uh podcast releases on porn because it is so prevalent in the male in the male world and it sounds crazy but it's mm -hmm. totally common like it's a normal thing growing up as yeah you don't realize there's something wrong until you kind of wake up a little and it's just totally normalized in the man's world. And I truly think it's, it's one of, if not the worst one out there for men, because it's so normalized and it can be so damaging, but yeah, it's, it's damaging because it ruins their relationships. They prefer a fantasy yes. that they can control their head rather than interact with a partner right. that's going to want something, right? <laughs> you can make that fantasy be whatever you want it to be. And it's crazy. And, yeah, it's very that. destructive for interpersonal relationships. Yeah, and I've already. Had I'm not a prude, from you know. Point. I'm all about a good time, but <laughs> yeah, this stuff is. It, it also it it uh, rewires the brain, which is interesting too. But I, but it's interesting, and not that I care about this at all. But I've already had some backlash of people that are like defending it because it's such a, a thing, and I'm like, hey, yeah. look, it's I'm just telling you my experience and people that I've literally had to mentor and help. I'm not. Yeah, to each their own, you know, but an addiction is an addiction. You're so right. And it's, that's awesome. That this medicine is, there is a medicine like this that can truly rewire the brain and give the opportunity for you to like go in and start, start a new, start a new yeah. routine of life. It is so amazing. I can't yeah. even find the words for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm awesome. really excited about it. I'm really I'm so excited it's for you and proud of you. I love watching your growth, like seeing where this goes because there's yeah. going to be 
you just you're just taken off and i love it and there's definitely going to be another episode probably in the next thing that happens with you down the road i, I love who it. knows you know who knows you know i used to think like Starting a couple of years ago, I was thinking, you know, there needs to be an Ibogaine clinic out there just for people with eating disorders, yes. you know, and I would really like to see that happen in my lifetime. And now I'm thinking <laughs> maybe it'll be me, you know, yeah. I mean, who else is going to do it? But yeah. even if it's not, it's not, it's, I really don't want to be an administrator. I love that, you know, the one-on-one -on -one experiences that I do, yeah. but it makes having, you know, a life kind of hard. Of course, being an administrator, you don't have a life either. Uh, so <laughs> anyway. anyway <laughs> I have to start small because I'm getting the word out to people with, with the help of, you know, podcasts such as yourself yeah, yeah. and any way that I can scream from the rooftops to let people know there's might be an option you haven't thought of or heard of. Man, I'm just saying. And that's saying, only get, get that. my, my only message. You, you should know, there, only get, get a book more. out there. There would be people read because the nice thing about a book too is people can like, because there's people probably listening or know someone that is still has that fear of reaching out because it's admitting it, but they could read a book with your info on it and get you. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you for everything you're doing. How, how, what is the best? I'm going to post all your links, everything. Uh, I believe in this so, so, so much. Anyway, major, thank you. please, please, please don't hesitate to ask us. We are all couldn't be more aligned. What, where's the, what's the bet for people that are just listening? What's the best way to reach you? Best way to find me is on Facebook. Yep. You know, Karen dot O'Neill and that's O N E E L. I'm, there's two of us. I'm the one that looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Facebook a lot. You know, that's been my main connector tool. In fact, it's Facebook is what brought me to Mexico with all the complaining people that do about Facebook. You're never going to hear me say anything bad about it because it made was the connection tool, right? Yeah. To allow me to change my whole entire life in the last three years, yep. you know, completely. I would actually even say five years, you know, back to when I did my first blood. You know, that the people, you know, that brought me to Mexico were, had been my Facebook friends for a couple of awesome. years. And like, you just never know, you know, yeah. how it's going to work out. Do you have a, do you have like a little, uh, business page yet on there or? Uh, no, I need to do that. It's on my well, to-do list along well, with writing a book. That, let us know. I need to write a book and I need to do a website. So and we'll, add, I want... we'll add the page to our group too. So when people join the group, they see your page first. So right. we'll oh, Okay. Great. Yeah. That's cool. awesome. Well, we're so yeah. excited for you. Reach out to Karen. Please, please do. A magical couldn't be more aligned with it. And it's your healing and it's your health and you deserve it 100%. Uh, that's why wonderful people that are called to work with these medicines for their purpose, like Karen, have been through the fire and they can help you. So reach out to her. We couldn't suggest more. Thank you so, so much for being on, Karen. We love you so much. Thank you for all your Love doing. you guys too. See have you soon. You have to come visit. I know we do. We will. We When this mess calms down, you know we're going to be out there. Yeah, I think we have another, you know, it's going to be a rough winter, you know, yeah. the vaccine gets starts getting distributed yep, and yep. we find out how effective, what's the percentage, like, yep. you know, and so Ready yeah, it's going to be a rough that. winter, but then <laughs> then we get our lives back and hopefully, hopefully we've learned something yeah. in it'll this be, time. It'll be here before we know it, you know. Yeah. Have a wonderful evening out there. Thanks again for being on with us, Karen. Thanks, David. Bye-bye.